Virgo, great big welcome to you. This is your tarot reading for the month of January. It's coming from the mountains of Java, but no, that opening photo isn't of Java where it never never snows, or at least not on my mountain. No, it's a Brosley in Shropshire near where I'm originally from. Virgo, I really hope you get something from this and find it useful. Virgo, I have to say this doesn't look like a happy January. I suppose that central card gives it away, the tower. So it's a sudden and abrupt ending, almost to everything you know. So it's not pleasant, you're going to have to rebuild your life. Now, often these are for the things are for the best. Um, so although January might not be pleasant, maybe in February or later on, you'll be looking back at it and saying, oh, thank goodness that happened. Uh, the recent past we have the ace of swords bottom right and that's you i think it could be seeking information but i think it's you getting some new information or something does that information cause the tower i don't know i don't know your current energy is the six of pentacles card of charity Probably, and I might be wrong, probably you're receiving charity because people feel sorry for you, for the destruction of your life, if it were. Your future energy is that the High Priestess, somebody who, have, who has command of the material and the spiritual, the conscious and the unconscious. So maybe that's the benefit from this Tower moment, there was something you had to know. Uh, the energy impacting on the outcome is the Ace of Wands. So it's, it's quite like the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords would be seeking information. And this is more, it could be seeking information, but it's, it's more of a sort of an action orientated type of card. So more actively doing it, uh, whereas the Sword could be more cerebral. Uh, the card that would change the outcome is the Emperor. Father figure, rules and regulations. Mm, conservative attitude towards things. The outcome is the Eight of Cups, you being disillusioned and walking away. Now, given that we've got these two aces, I think some information does come to you that makes you disillusioned with something. We don't know what, but you walk away from it. Whereas the more conservative thing to do would be to stick with it. Now I'm going to have to try and find out what it is, aren't I? <laughs> Maybe I won't, but I'm going to have to try and find it out. So I hope you'll stick around and listen to it. And if you're enjoying it so far, why don't you hit the like button and make a comment. Uh, better still, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you get future notifications. Because these things help me immensely. They really do, Virgo. And in anticipation of you doing those small things for me, I'd really like to thank you most profusely. You may well be asking, why from Java? What's important about tarot from Java? And the truth is, there is nothing so important about tarot from Java. Simply that here in Java, we have many different spirits who will come to help in, in your tarot reading. It will probably put a different reflection on things. For example, the spirits here are less likely to be concerned about love and finances, despite people in Java being every bit as interested in these things as the rest of us. But maybe the spirits are trying to tell us something else. Now I'll be using probably two decks, but out of three decks. So the first deck is Taro Nusantara. The second deck is the Steampunk deck. And the third deck is the Light Visions Taro. Um, 
Taro Nusantara is actually a new one to me, which, which I love. Whereas the light visions um, I've struggled with as a result of the rendering. Um, although I, I think I'll grow into it, I, I will keep using it and coming back to it. You can see on all of them, I'm using quite a lot of uh, salt and that's to clear the energy and the spirits from them. Something that I do fairly regularly with my tarot. And I also, you'll see a number of gym out there that I use um, just to bring a good energy to the tarot um, and to my reading. Perhaps the most important mystical object we use in Java is the Chris, the curly knife that you can see that I've placed across both decks. Chris are very important for bringing the spirits to work on any object here in Java. And I call on the spirits of the mountain to assist me in shuffling the cards, in selecting the cards and interpret them correctly. For Virgo, for January 2023. Now as I say, the energy running through all of this is the tower. And there's no way of dressing it up. I mean, the tower's the tower's far from being a lovely card. Um, a tower moment is a sudden and abrupt ending, probably an ending to everything you know, and you're going to have to rebuild your life. Uh, but often these things come for a reason. It's often in your best interest, even though it's not going to feel like it when it's happening. You look at the card, well, yeah, the tower's been struck by lightning. They're falling out of the tower. There's nothing they can do but fall out and then try and rebuild something. Hopefully on a more solid foundation. And I think that's the silver lining in the cloud, if you like. Um, now this runs throughout the entire reading, so I have to interpret everything in terms of it. Um, was it in the past? Was it in the past? And January is your attempt at rebuilding your life, but it doesn't go that well so far. I need to tell you that. Could be in the past. There's nothing... I don't know. It makes more sense if it's in the past. That's why I'm saying it, but we'll see. Now, we really don't know if the tower is in the past, but what we do know about the recent past is you have the energy of the Ace of Swords and that is some information coming to you. You might be seeking it but I think it's some information coming to you and I think it's that information that causes the tower. So it's clearly some devastating information that, that changes your perspective on everything. That's really what I think happens. Or does it? No, no. The information does create the tower. Because the cards would be the other way round if the tower tower gives rise to the information. Yeah. Um, you look at it, well, you know, there's something divine about it. So this is information you needed to know, even though it might not feel pleasant at the time. Your current energy is the Six of Pentacles. This is a card of charity. And when I first saw it, I said, almost oh, no, certainly this is you receiving charity because people feel sorry for you, that your world has come tumbling down. And I still think it's that. But remembering that the Ace of Swords was about you getting some information, maybe that information is that people have brought an end to so many things in your life and you need to be more charitable in your thoughts towards them. That's a possibility. That is a possibility. You look at the card, well, she looks like Lady Bountiful, doesn't she? Giving out the money to those poor people. And she's doing it fairly. She's got some scales there. Of course, it could be some sort of karmic, although you wouldn't necessarily associate this card with karma. It could be karmic. And now your future energy is that for his High Priestess. And I think this comes about as a result of this Tower moment. 
She's somebody with a degree of balance that operates between worlds. So she operates between the material world and the spiritual world. And if you look at the card, well, she's got a wand in one hand and a book in another. Somebody that's, uncom that's comfortable with her conscious and unconscious and those of others. Her foot's on the moon, so somebody that understands the, the unknown, if you like. Has command of the unknown. And you see the balance, you know, there's, there's one black and one white column behind her head. I see this as something quite good, and I think this has come about as a result of the tower. So I said often towers are for the best, and I think this is a product of the tower. And now the energy that creates the outcome is the Ace of Wands. The Ace of Wands is very like the Ace of Swords, but <coughs> to a certain degree it's a little bit more action orientated. I said the Ace of Swords, you could be seeking information, but it could be information simply coming to you. Whereas the Ace of Wands is you looking for inspiration, you looking for information, you looking for something different and something new, which you would do after a tower moment. You would do. Uh, but I also think that um, and this is probably chronologically prior to the High Priestess. I think you're finding out some problems with the way your life has been to date. And you're choosing not to rebuild in the same way. That's my feeling. And I think partly you're getting this from this Ace of Wands. Now, what would change the outcome is the Emperor energy. It's a father-like figure. Somebody that's bound by rules and regulations, and I think that is important. Possibly somebody that, uh, yeah, very conservative. Somebody that is happy in acting rules and regulations as well. was the tower due to you being a little bit conservative and you attempting to rebuild in the same image maybe maybe that's how we should see it you look at him he looks very powerful doesn't he i mean it's not a bad card by any stretch of the imagination uh, but given we've got the high priestess i think you're feeling that there's something wrong with this conservative approach and of course, you know, the, the, the Ace of Wands is suggesting you're looking for inspiration, you're looking for something different. And I think the reason why I've taken this line is the outcome is the Eight of Cups, which is you becoming disillusioned and walking away. So I think it's you becoming disillusioned with how your life's been, not wanting to rebuild your life, as it was, but seeking change. And I don't think we quite know what that change is yet, but you just don't want it to be the same. Maybe you're fearful that if you do it the same, you will you will have another tower. Maybe that's what you really know. But yeah, I think you're seeking change. I, do you know, I, 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 think, I think in the past you were a little bit too deterministic. You know, and I think now you're looking for something different, looking for something more inspirational, more creative, and that's why you're walking away. You look at the card, well, there's the eight cups there, you know, so, and a nice lake by the looks of it. So you've got quite a lot, but you, you're just walking away. You're walking away into the moon, which is the unknown, and you're walking up a mountain, which, which can't be easy. But nevertheless, you're doing it. You're doing it. Right, let's get some clarity. And I'm going to seek clarity on the tower. I mean, we know what the tower means. <laughs> so hopefully the clarity won't just confirm that. <coughs> and what I'm really seeking clarity is why it happened and what did you lose. And the first card of clarity is the Eight of Wands, 
firm sense of direction, having your ducks in a row and moving quickly. Uh, the next card of clarity is the Eight of Pentacles, you learning something. And the final card of clarity is the Page of Cups, creative opportunities. Could it be that you were in learning and you gave up the learning, you became disillusioned with it because you realised that this wasn't the trajectory you wanted in your life. That's how it feels. Let's look at each individual. And yeah, the first card, this of clarity, this this eight, is it an eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. Yeah, it is an eight. I must have missed one in my counting. Eight of wands. Very firm sense of direction, moving quickly towards it. Everything's in alignment, you know. Yeah, doing everything towards a purpose. And I think this new information that comes to you is that it's the wrong purpose. And this is what brings about the tower moment. It's you that brings about the tower moment. Yeah, it's you that brings it about because you realise you're heading in the wrong direction. You look at it, all of those ones are going off in the same direction with a degree of pace. And you've rushed off and done something thinking this is how your life should be. And it's you realise it's not for you. You want something more creative, more inspiration. You know, maybe you were studying to be an engineer or something like that, or an accountant. And no, you want something more creative. This isn't for you. Looks. And what is it that you gave up? I'm saying you created the tower moment. I mean, you haven't necessarily created it. It might be that it's just what you were doing was unsuited to you. Because we now have the Eight of Pentacles, which is you in some form of learning. I mean, it could be an apprenticeship. In fact, you look at the card, it looks more like an apprenticeship, doesn't it? So you could be doing, say, an engineering apprenticeship and realising that you really want to be a hairdresser, something like that. I suspect not. I suspect you're at college or university and you're studying for something and you're realising it's just not you. Do you create the tower moment yourself? Maybe not. Maybe you get thrown out. Maybe you don't pass the necessary exams to continue. Uh, but you were doing something that you realised wasn't for you and it creates this tower and you're happier without it now. You were finding it laborious and you were questioning, why the hell am I doing it? And so the final card of clarity is the Page of Cups. You seeking out creative opportunities. So I'm sure you were learning, you know, maybe you're training to be an accountant, maybe you were an apprentice to be an engineer. And really, what you want is something much more creative. Maybe you want to be an artist. As I said, maybe you want to be a hairdresser. There's something much more creative, and you're seeking that in your life. So whatever you were doing, and I'm sure you were studying, or in some shape or form you were studying, you just weren't cut out for it. You're not that type of person. And Oh, of course, we've got the High Priestess. This is you learning about yourself. You learning about yourself. Yes, yes, of course. Of course, you're learning about yourself. You're learning that you're really a creative person. Yeah, yeah. And you look at him. Well, he's... It's she, sorry. She's walking along the beach. Wine glass in one hand. I'm not, I'm not keen there's a war play behind her, but, you know, she looks lovely. She does look a creative person. That's you, Virgo. I can summarise. Virgo, what dominates this reading is a tower moment, a sudden and abrupt ending uh, to something very fundamental in your life. And I'm pretty certain it's learning. Maybe you're at college, maybe you're at university, maybe it was an apprenticeship, but you were learning something for the future. And that something was somewhat rule-based. 
could have been something like engineering, accountancy, something like that. Now in the past, I think you were searching for information about yourself, searching for what sort of person am I? Am I really cut out to be an engineer or a chartered accountant or what have you? And right now, I'd ask you to be a little bit more charitable to yourself. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes and you have made a mistake. You're pursuing the wrong thing. And you're beginning to understand that. You're beginning to realise that your trajectory is the wrong one. You're not suited to it. You're a much more creative person. And that's beginning to come to you, that you're much more creative. And you want to do something much more creative. But it's difficult because, you know, you're committed to doing something. You thought you'd got your life sorted, your ducks in a row, but you haven't. Now, I don't know if you caused this ending or it happens for you. You know, maybe you get thrown out of university because you don't pass your exams or I don't know. Whatever. It comes to an end. It comes to an end. And you walk away, you walk away from what you were doing. And I don't think just yet, you know, it's not a question of you change what you're doing. You walk away because you're seeking something very different. And you're seeking to understand yourself, but you, you, you will, you, you will end up understanding yourself. You are going to get this balance, but there's this innate conservatism that's saying, well, I, I really ought to learn this and then get a good job and then do this. and You know, 2.4 children and a picket fence, etc, etc. And you're rejecting it, you know. You know you're rejecting it, but you can't bear to do it quite. It feels so difficult. Be a bit more charitable to yourself. It's all going to be sorted out. Don't worry, Virgo. It's just something most of us go through at some point in our life. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed Tarot from Java as an addition to my channel, The Magic of Java. Please take a look at the other, the other uh, videos that I have on this channel about Magic from Java. And I hope that you will be, become a subscriber. Now, if you want to find, hear your next tarot reading, hit the button and that will inform you of when I publish new, um, new readings. I'm certainly going to do a reading for every month, but maybe I will try them a bit more frequently, say a mid-month reading, and maybe also some special readings. But above all, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, and enjoy Java. <laughs>